Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. So in this particular video, I am going to show you how to paint the zebra. We're going to start with undertones. So you want to visually remove those stripes from the zebra. And then you focus on the lightest tones. So technically white, right? But we need to recreate this white with watercolors. And what works is using primary colors. So yellow, blue, and red. So once you play with those colors, and another thing is you want to mix the colors on your paper rather than your palette. Number one reason why is to avoid muddiness of colors. So you don't want to create like a perfect color blend on your palette. Instead, you quickly grab the colors you want, whether it's the primary colors or some other blend. Then you mix the colors on the paper. You let those colors to spread. You want to see the separation of colors. You want to choose the right colors too. Some watercolors are transparent, some watercolors are less transparent, and some watercolors are way more opaque. So the more opaque watercolors, the more chances to run into that muddiness of colors. So that's another reason why you want to mix colors on the paper versus your palette. Now a full class is available on Patreon. I provide a sketch so you can download my sketch. You can download the reference image and I provide a list of art supplies. Another benefit of being a patron is that, of course, you get a new class every week, but you get to communicate with me, you get to ask me questions, I always respond to all the messages, and also I always share tips, many tips and links back to other classes to refer to something like, okay, you need more information about how to create natural grays in watercolor or how to create a natural white, shade of white in watercolor. Now let's talk about the stripes. So as you watch this video, you will get to the point where I am talking about the stripes. Again, you want to mix colors on the paper, not the palette. Yes, we will slightly blend the colors on the palette, but all that mixing should really happen on a paper because you want to see separation of colors. The separation of colors is one and also different shades of that black because we will be creating our own shade of black. Again, I invite you to join me on Patreon. And for now, uh, please watch this video and let me know if you have any questions. Hi everyone, welcome to this class. We're going to paint zebra and I have actually uh, a test piece here. So this is my zebra uh, paint, painted just the way I, I kind of want in this class. Grab a flat brush or any brush you want to actually use to wet it. And then we're going to wet our zebra. So you can go through the eye. So go through the eye because we're just going to, uh, the, the eye is darker anyway. So it doesn't matter if any color goes in there while we're applying colors for the, for all that skin the zebra right so this here. is again my quilt i'm gonna grab a little more water here so i have enough that water you can feel it out on that empty space on your palette and then grab a little bit of that cobalt blue and if it feels too much like water like ratio this is water like ratio but if i feel like it's a little too um too diluted with water to paint and i'm gonna keep grabbing more and more paint till it feels more like between water milk like now i'm gonna find these yellow i'm sorry bluish uh, areas. I don't see them really everywhere or even like that much of it. Uh, I want to actually grab a little bit of indigo to a tiny bit, but I'm going to make those areas. So that's another thing. Sometimes you don't really see that undertone, but just the fact we're creating these or adding these undertone colors, that's what really makes our artwork uh, look uh, really pretty and more natural. So I'm grabbing a little more of the indigo. I'm going to grab or grab, apply it more towards like the eye, around the eye, because that's where I feel that bluish tone is. And then I'm gonna grab more of this cobalt blue here, quin red, and find a couple more areas wherever I wanna add it. Now this part here, this jawline needs to be a little lighter, so I'm gonna stay away from here, but I do want more of that color here, especially the muzzle. So I'm just gonna apply it. Now, because I'm using between water and milk like ratio, the paint is spreading and I, that's exactly why I'm going for this ratio because I do want the paint to spread. And then maybe here, maybe I'll pull it upwards a little bit towards the, the, the eye here, this area. And then I, I feel like there's maybe a little bit of that here. Now what I'm going to do, 
clean the brush. I'm cleaning the brush. And now this is where I'm going to grab this. You need, uh, this is raw sienna. You need more water. And then there is my Yumi de Zalong Yellow, raw sienna, a little thicker, I guess, more like a um, milk like ratio, I'd say. And then I'm going to go not directly over the blue. And if I do, I'm going to have to clean my brush so the colors don't mix too much in this case, because when you have yellow and blue, you create a shade of green, right? Unless you're mixing colors on the paper and you're not trying to like mix them too much, if that makes sense. So here, this is the area. I'm going over that blue, right? But I don't see green because I'm mixing colors on the paper and I'm not really go trying to mix them that hard on the paper, if that makes sense. And then more of that raw sienna, even as a long yellow, Quinn red, as you see, it's very quick. I'm not trying to spend too much time here on mixing these colors. Now this is the, the muzzle area and we have that transition part there. I do want these, the shade of this yellow orange. I grab more, more and more of that milk-like ratio. Or it's more like a between, right? And then I want this to be a little warmer. So I'm grabbing a little more of the Quinn Red, for example. And this is the area that I feel like I need to add more of that Quinn Red with the yellows. It's not just Quinn Red, it's also the, the yellows, the yellow tones. And then here, maybe now, we could also grab a little bit of Burnt Sienna, but I want all of these colors together, not just that. Not just Burnt Sienna, for example. And then I go over the same areas where I already applied the colors. Now I am going fast, and I, forgive me please, but it's I don't have the choice because the paper is drying fast. Again, you do have a, an option to wet the back side of the paper too. Um, and then you would just wet the entire front side of the paper. So that's one way to extend that time so so paper doesn't dry too fast. Now this is my corn red again. Raw sienna, yellow. Some of the burnt sienna. Very quick grab. I'm not trying to mix these colors on uh, on my palette. It's all on the paper. There you go. And then finding these areas again. The the areas, the muzzle, and whatever I can see, feel those warmest tones. And then here, for example, this is the area. So now what you're going to notice after a few minutes of painting, the paint stops spreading as fast. So that means you're having, you're starting to have more control, right? This is another area that feels like it's kind of has these warmer lines. And I do want to make sure I have that before this is too dry to add more color. I continue with this water to milk like ratio. Um, the paper is still wet. So that's why I'm, I'm just adding more and more color because I can. And the thing is that I am not like cleaning my brush. I'm not dipping it in water, which is why like, so you have like a whole bunch of little islands of colors, right? And then there's my Van Dyke Brown. So I'm gonna swirl through here. When you look at the stripes, they do feel a little more brownish. But what you're gonna do, and then I want to start, let's say, right here. So I'm very gentle, like how I touch the paper. Like, it's like almost barely touching the paper because this is like a very fine line. And I do want actually more water with my paint. It does not feel like I have enough water. I do want these stripes to be transparent and I wanna show there's different shades of uh, uh, like this, dark, it's almost like you would say black, but it does have different, sh there's different shades of it. And then we can, if we see more blue, let's grab some of this indigo. So every time I go back there and I grab more color, the ratio between the colors itself changes. I just grabbed a little bit more of like the burnt sienna, for example. And then I'm kind of trying to pay attention to where these stripes are. Uh, because like I have a sketch and to be honest if you do not see your sketch anymore I suggest I highly suggest that you resketch the stripes Because it's so much easier to follow the pattern like this Versus if you stop seeing like this kind of like a trail and it can get super confusing 
and it happened to me in the in the past and that's why I know like it's so much easier to uh, paint when you see where you're adding color so this is like the mix-up right right with all of all these colors you change the ratio between colors let's say I want more of the blue violet and then I want some more of that brown then I'm gonna uh, grab it quickly and then keep going up somewhere here I guess and then more of that color let's see where's this stripe it's like right above this eye kind of feels like it's more diluted it should be more diluted with water so I'm gonna grab my other brush and have the paint more diluted with water but I don't have enough of it so I didn't have enough so I had to quickly grab more water and I still don't have enough just so I can finish this stripe right here and the same thing here so another one here and another one behind and even more right here so these are the, the stripes that are like kind of more in the background I'd say and then one over here for example so now it what it feels like I have more actually of burnt sienna on my brush. I'm gonna go back to my other brush in just a second. But first, I feel like I wanna define the head because that's how you define the head too. I went a little too thick here. So I need to use the tip of my brush and I'm gonna grab some more blend, but it needs to be water-like ratio. This is more like in the background. But that's what helps me to define this kind of cheek there and the def to define the the end of the face in a way from that side and the same thing here I can do the same thing so when I remove the masking fluid um, I can still see where that face ends and I can do the same thing next to masking slightly so I'm gonna clean the brush I was just using and then stick to this one and I do need way more water everything dries fast right so we have to keep adding water to it too at the same time so this is another stripe this one feels more brownish I think it would be really beautiful if you keep changing the ratios because um, you're gonna see like even blue violet like shades of blue violet now I'm a little confused here with my stripes I'm trying to decide like what is this one and this one I know this is a stripe for sure right here this one right here is a stripe, so that means this one too is a stripe. Like this. So you're just pressing harder, like a little bit on the on the paper when you want to create like a thicker line, but also if you want to release more paint. And then there's this one. So you start and you don't want to stop, you just want to keep going and keep going till you create like some kind of pattern right and then we have one here something like that again this is what it looks like I'm just grabbing these colors and recreating the, the pattern that I see it's a little confusing because again I don't see exactly what I meant <laughs> when I was uh, sketching is like what why did I add this one or something or, or that one so I'm going to divide it like this, just to not confuse myself. Now, what happens when we touch the mane? Actually, this is a good one. So what I would do is clean my brush, wipe it on a towel, and what I'm going to do is wet from the top first, at first, and then connect the pieces like that. So I have the connect, connected pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to keep grabbing more paint, because I'm not done. I, I'm only like 20% done here. And I continue adding the stripes. So one more here, more color. Just kind of going through the palette, picking up all these colors. It, will, it, it doesn't even matter if you have like yellow, as long as you have another color and you're, you see the separation of colors. And here again, I have this situation where I have, um, where I have it ending here, which is the the main, what I'm gonna do is wet it from the top at first and then connect it just like that. Now the pattern seems different, a little bit different compared to the reference now. I can see it 
because here I was a little lower, I mean higher. And But here I have another stripe. If you want, you can completely like change things up and you could actually make the zebra with like purple stripes. That would look beautiful too. There you go. And then more color. So I can finish this long one right here. You want to have the ratio again is between water and milk. Sometimes it feels more like uh, water, like ratio. I think I went a little too thick on this one compared to the reference, but my stripes are not exactly what we see in the reference too. It's just a general idea of it. And actually these stripes on the bottom should be a little more transparent, let's say. So please keep that in mind. And then let's see, more of the blue-violet. When I say blue-violet, that's cobalt blue and quin red. But I'm adding more of like indigo too because this one actually seems actually a little darker. If you painted with me the giraffe, we did a giraffe, I think it was last year, maybe it was previous year, but we did a giraffe in the same way. Like we started by painting the skin with undertones, and then uh, we were adding the patches. It was the same situation, like how we are adding the stripes. Wet on dry, and we're changing the ratios between the colors. I think I want more of the burnt sienna with this patch here. Something like this, to show more of that burnt sienna, but then I feel like maybe it's too burnt sienna-like. So I just grab more of that uh, indigo and quid red and blue violet, so the cobalt blue quid red. And then here, so you want to use the tip of your brush when you're painting these finer lines, but also you could switch to a smaller brush, just FYI. If it's too much water, like I have a little too much water, one part of the stripe dries before the other part, so it could be like a, like a, almost like a bloomy thing situation. So what I'm gonna do is grab a, a damp brush and kind of slightly pull it. The same thing here. So I have a little too much, my brush is too loaded with a little too much of the paint and water. And in between, well, we do have like little ones here, let's say, maybe here. Maybe we can add a couple over there as well. And um, I'll continue going that way. So more of the colors together here. And let's see, we do have one right here, which is be almost like behind the ear. I'm gonna share like all my versions so you can see exactly like how I painted it uh, with the background too. And then let's see, my daughter likes the background one better, but I actually prefer the no background. There you go, something like that. But you know, it's a matter of preference, like someone's preference, so. There you go, and then maybe a couple here over the ear so we can show that there's that E, right? So these are gonna be the thicker ones, but we're not there yet, quite yet. And first of all, I have this one, kind of goes like this. And then next to it, I have something too. Now this is the neck part, right? So I kind of need to show that there's a separation. I grabbed too much of the burnt sienna. So now I have to kind of, but I still have to, in a way, um, dilute colors with water. There you go. So it's a mess. It seems like a mess, right? But I do want colors to be diluted with water to that water-like ratio in a way. Or it's milk-like ratio, but then I add more water as I am bringing the colors in. There you go, something like that. So please don't worry too much about like having perfect color mix or something like that. That's not important at all. Because you want to show their separation of colors. So this is this bigger one. And it goes like this. And this is important because it shows that this is the neck part and then this is all uh, darker. Or this is the neck, actually, this is the jawline. So I need to do this one nicely. 
And this one goes, well, I think it goes like this. So I'm pulling this, and then right there we have the ear. So I need to stop right there. But there's more to it because I also have this little stripe. There's nothing straight about these stripes. So it doesn't matter like, like how you press really that brush because there's nothing straight about it. And then we have, let's see, this one here. So this is important how you shape this one actually, for example, because you kind of start here and you turn and that gives us the dimension too. So we gotta follow that. Feels like my paint is becoming just uh, like water, like milk-like ratio, I'm sorry, so thick, thicker. And I'm gonna do this one too, I forgot already. More of the colors mixed together. So I can finish this. This is more like between water milk like ratio again. And then over here. And then a wet from this side. So I can connect the stripes. Something like that. And then I could do it ahead of time, just wet it. And then start again, but I need some of the blue. There you go. And then press harder to release more paint and you keep going. You don't want to stop. I mean with the actually never mind. You can stop. This is not wet on wet. This is wet on dry. You can stop if you want to. But um kind of what I was gonna say is when you stop like and you start thinking about things like th th some parts might dry and that's what I meant. Uh, so you kind of want to just go in that continuous stroke. You can just go slower, slower, let's just say. Don't want to confuse you too much. And here, what do we got? We have this one here. This one, again, starts like this. I guess it starts more like this. But then we have another piece of it. You're going to see the reference. I'm going to connect the two. I need more water with my paint. I want to show there's some of the burnt sienna. I gotta grab more burnt sienna. And then I want to make it darker. So I'm just kind of scooping all of it, plus indigo, plus some of this Van Dyke brown. And I gotta hurry up because I stopped there. I don't want the paint to dry on me. Because I'm not done with the stripe yet. These are fun because the, the stripes are always fun or the patches on the um on the giraffe, for example, I always enjoy stuff like that. And then water, just a damp brush, actually. Here, I feel like I need to take it a little further down there. More of the color. So this is the water-like ratio. I'm sorry, between water and milk. I'm gonna add the line here, even though I don't have it in the sketch. And then more of that water. This needs to be way more diluted than water. So I'm basically cleaning my palette. And this one goes all the way here. More paint, scooping it. There you go. I don't know if it's the last stripe yet, because it depends. I uh, want to kind of zoom out, at least with my eyes, so I can see the whole thing. And it seems like I could make this part a little bit darker. And then damp brush just to soften the top. It wouldn't be a bad idea to add a little bit of color here too. And then softening it with a damp brush, with a damp brush. And let's see, do I wanna do any more? Do I wanna add any more stripes? I guess it's a, I don't matter if you want to because this looks full in a way. There, one of these stripes should go over a little bit over the eye, and I'm gonna do it because I like it. But I'm gonna make it like a separate almost, something like that. And then I have stripes around the the eye, so that's all good. So I think that's it for these stripes. So, thank you so much for your time, and please let me know if you have any questions.